tanıtmak istiyorum. Kısa bir tanıtım yapacağım. E, Doktor Viktor Fursov, Ukrayna Kiev'den e, Zooloji of National Academy Enstitüsü'nde entomolog böceklerin taksonomisi, biyolojik mücadelesinin ekolojik prensipleri konularında araştırmalarda bulunmakta. E, Tirkogramma familyasının taksonomisi ve biyolojisi olan doktora konusu 1988 yılında tamamlamış bulunmakta. Halen çalıştığı enstitüde kalsitoid ve bazı kritogaster familyasına bağlı yumurta parasitoidlerinin taksonomisi, biyolojisi, faunası ve dağılımı konularında çalışmaktadır. Doktor Fursal özellikle ekonomik öneme sahip tirkogramma familyasının parasitoidlerinin taksonomisi yönünde çalışmalarını yürütmektedir. E, Doktor Fursal e, yeni türlerin tanılanması, farklı parasitoidlerin taksonomisi ve biyolojisi üzerinde çeşitli dergilerde yayınlar yapmış bulunmakta ve bu yayınların 103 tane dergide yayınlamıştır. İki kitabı, kendine ait iki kitabı, sekiz kitapta bölüm içerisinde yazılarda bulunmuş e, ve 60 konferansta da katılmıştır. E, Doktor Fursal İngilizce, İngiltere, Fransa, İtalya başta olmak üzere 11 ülkede araştırma merkezlerini ziyaret etmiş ve uluslararası kongrelere katılmıştı. Ülkemizde de TÜBİTAN e, bir e, bilim adamı konuk bilim adamı programında Türkiye'deki tirkogramma familyasının taksonomisi ve biyolojisine yönelik çalışmaları yürütmek üzere bir yıllığını en sonunda çalışmalarda yürüteceğiz. Kendisine tekrar hoş geldiniz der. Sizleri senin evine baş başa bırakmak istiyorum. Thank you very much for coming. I'm very sorry for these uh, technical problems and necessity to wait for these uh, very important minutes. Very, very sorry. Nevertheless, hopefully the computer will work and you know, sometimes computer is more important than presenter. So, of course, now with photographs, with presentation, it is extremely important to show your results rather than only to speak. So, that's why I will try to explain results of my research here in Turkey and also I will show some results of my research in my country in Ukraine. If you are interested in Ukraine I will make another presentation next day uh, fully about Ukraine but now I will tell about my subject about family Trichogrammatide. This family is exclusively egg parasitoids. What means egg parasitoids? We belong to entomophagous insects and who are entomophagous insects? These entomophagous insects are different they are endophagous because they are eating phytophagous insects. For instance, uh, by eating different caterpillars, they are eating aphids, they are eating pupae, many different insects, which are belonging to different orders. You know, parasitic insects are extremely different. They are belonging to beetles, uh, flies, uh, lice wings, caddis flies, stepsiptera and moths. But I study hymenoptera. These are parasitic wasps. Well, I study sub superfamily Halcidaeidae and especially family Trichogrammatida. So there are different types of parasitism. Parasitism can be egg parasitism, egg larval parasitism, larval parasitism, pupil, egg pupil, and adult parasitism. And of course, there are different methods for collecting. I will start from the from beginning from methods of collecting because. This is just the start of study. And of course, the most common uh, equipment, this is entomological net. You know, this is an entomological net, or this type of entomological net, triangle entomological net, which is more convenient for sweeping just parallel to the ground. So it's more effective. So more insects coming. This is invention of Dr. John Noyce from British Museum in London. And many people use it, but it's little bit expensive. But of course another very effective equipment I use it as well. This is Malay strap. Malay strap this is like a special house done from tissue and insects coming to this tent they are coming to the up and collecting on the top in the box with alcohol in usually in 90-96% alcohol. So all insects very small little bit bigger flying insects just crawling insects, jumping insects. <coughs> they are coming, put on the wall and coming upstairs and collecting inside the box. Very effective method for collecting. In different countries people use it because insects can be collected slowly without your attention. 
they are collecting, this is lazy, we can say, method, because this method allowed to collect during several days without your attention. This is another interesting method. I also use it at home and people in different countries started to use it. This is a method with ventilator collecting trap. And people in Brazil, in Japan, use this method. I did it also at home, but I didn't take it because it needs electricity. And usually you just need to be touched to electricity because ventilator working and all insects coming inside ventilator and then are collected inside the box on the bottom. And you can say the insects will be destroyed. No, small insects, low, less than one millimeter, I study less than one millimeter, they are going through the trap and they are collected inside in alcohol box without any damage. Surprisingly, but it's true. And insects, they are flying like plankton in, a, in a nature. You cannot see them, but they are flying and they are coming there like small plankton very effectively. This ventilator trap will suck inside one cu cu cubometer of air very quickly. You cannot do it with common sweeping net. This is very difficult. That's another method uh, with the same but little bit changed. Here, uh, Japanese inventor Takazu Takagi, Takazu Takagi, he used special sticky plate near ventilator. So insects were coming to ventilator and they will stick on the plate because of some sticky material. You can see on the left there are small insects, one millimeter and less than one millimeter, they are sticked to this sticky plate. Uh, very useful, but a little bit different. Difficult because you need to take them off from sticky material. It takes time. The another method which was invented already many years ago, this is an uh, umbrella trap. When you're just coming to the tree or just a uh, shrub and you're just pushing the tree and just trying to knock the tree, so insects coming down from the tree. But this method the, in the last year was a little bit changed with uh, the help of my colleagues and friends in Ukraine. It's possible to use this uh, umbrella net, umbrella trap, and also special fogging with insecticide. Because um, fogging, usually fogging used against uh, flies, for instance, in some reserve, uh, reserves in Turkey, in Egypt. Uh, you, you see, this is somewhere in a hotel, probably, people fighting against flies. But if we use organic insecticide like pyrethrum, it's not so dangerous. You can make a huge fog around the tree and you can put something under the tree. So you will collect all insects, they will fall down from the tree, shrub or even very, very big tree. And this is method, very simple. Very simple, you can say also a little bit lazy, but it's long time used method invented by uh, Canadian scientists, calcidologists, uh, Dr. Masner, he is living in Canada, in Ottawa, and he used it for years because he used it in many, many countries in different regions of the world. And this is uh, different tracks, like this. This is a plastic, plastic plate. You can use it, you can, they are very cheap, you can buy it in a, in a supermarket, you can see it. And I use it just near the institute. I came out in the morning time, and then I put this traps on the ground, put them in the lines, and then I collected all the material from these traps mm, two times in a week. First part of week and last part of week. Well, approximately five, four days needs for collecting, even here. Even I collected in the late autumn, but with very interesting and surprising findings inside. You can see in the summertime so many insects coming to this plate because of yellow color and actually what is inside, why they are coming and how to collect them. We need to use very simple method. We need to use water, salted water and we need uh, to use a small detergent or shampoo. So we put shampoo in water and fill all these plates with shampoo and with water and salted water. So insects coming to salted water uh, are not destroyed during three, four, five days very useful and then you use a small aquarium net you can put all your insects from these plates inside and you will receive very small insects inside your aquarium net for your study 
This is another method similar like separator trap used also uh, by scientists from Canada, uh, John Gibson. Also this is a bag and after sweeping with simple uh, entomological net, he puts all insects inside this bag. And the roof, roof is done from the glass, so insects, because of positive phototaxis coming up, and they are collected on the top of this roof, this simple trap. But this is uh, another kind of trap, I use it here, and I use it in other my field collectings. You can see it in your hands, so you can touch, you can just screw it off, look inside, how it's done. You can make a copy, no problem. It's already described in an open journal in the publication. But it's useful for collecting uh, different insects also. Uh, you can save your time if you make three, four different threads. So you can use it on a car, so you can collect. You can sweep uh, insects by entomological net and put inside this trap. This black board, black part, you can put all the insects inside this in a black bag, so between there is a like, like a, this is here, this is special separator. So in this trap, there are two boxes big box and small box. So big insects are coming to big box, and smallest insects from one millimeter till 0 0.5 millimeter they're coming to small box, and these are usually parasitoids. I study parasitoids, so they are coming to small box, and I can fix them either in alcohol or just just dry and use it for taxonomical study. So this uh, trap was invented by my friend uh, uh, Hungarian scientist Turs Schaber and I'm very appreciated his kind help and he donated it as a gift to me some years ago and he described it already in literature. Another method for collecting and which is very important and the most effective and it gives you the most important biological information rearing your parasitoid from the host because when you know the host you know the biology of your parasitoid because either you use sweeping you don't know biology but if you rear your parasitoid you know the host you know the host plant for that you need to put host plant in special cages like here cages can be very very different like with these tubes or the cage with a living plant so insects developing it on the living plant and you can collect insects which will emerge from different parts of a plant and they will come to light so because they come in either upstairs because of phototropism and heterotropism on top or they will come let's say to the box because of they attracted to light all like here you can use even simple glasses with small small samples of different material for rearing or we use in our laboratory in Ukraine this very simple method collecting is in a tissue bags we've attached the glass this glass box so we put here some plants different foliage leaves different roots so insects which are developing inside plants they will develop in slowly till the plant is uh, fresh or they will emerge from dry plants as well so they will come to the light inside the box and you can collect them very fresh as a living or just very intact and good for scientific study Parasitoid Parasitoid Hymenoptera very important as because they are economically important as parasitoid of different agricultural and forestry pests and Hymenoptera they have a host among this you see 15 different orders of insects and they also attack spiders, arachnida, mites and they attack even nematoda. Very surprising events. They have very very wide range of hosts. But what about egg parasitism? Because my subject egg parasitoids. Egg parasitoids not so often because eggs were usually hidden, eggs were very small, so these parasitoids very very small usually. They are among these 12 families of different uh, Hymenoptera and some families, some of these parasitoids were not exclusively egg parasitoids some of them, like Eulophidae and Calcididae, were different they, develop, they start, uh, 
Parasitoid lay egg inside egg and developing in larva and calcivide developing in pupa. This is unique method. Like here, you see this answer to it. Lay egg in a small egg of noctoid moth. And parasitoid is bigger because larva will develop inside caterpillar. And here the same. Oats and cirtos lay egg in a small egg and will grow inside big larva. Or this one, this uh, calcidide lay egg, very big parasitoid, 5 millimeters, but lay eggs inside small eggs of flies. Uh, usually this is stratiomyidae flies. And develop, will develop inside pupa of this fly. But egg parasitoids, they uh, eat only the content of egg. So they live inside the egg, so this is where house or this is only the tissue they consume like this telenomidae, telenomus or trisolcus, and trichogrammatidae, okay. Trichogrammatidae they has, they have a wide range of uh, hosts because they attacked different orders of insects, maybe more orders, but this unknown because trichogrammatidae, these are egg parasitoids or, and their size from 0.2 millimeter up to 1.2 2 mm. So they're very small, so very difficult to find uh, and they attack eggs of uh, beetles, grasshoppers, tree, dragonflies, lace wings, so the, all these 11 orders. Even they attack eggs of trips, trips, you can imagine trips, usually 1 mm. And these par some parasitoids, they have a size only 0.2 mm, the smallest, smallest in the world. Uh, from a genus Megaphragma. And I wanted to show you where do they live? They live inside eggs. Eggs are different. Of course, eggs they can be found, but it is difficult because they are very small. Eggs they can be one by one, like this egg of Papilio on orange, or the eggs of uh, Pieris on cabbage on the left side, or some noctuid moths, or even this uh, Lifrolin moths, Tortricida, uh, in a group. In a group it's easier to find, or if you can find eggs black color, like here in the center, Noctuide, these eggs, they are parasitized, so they are becoming from, black, from white to black, because parasitoids developing inside. Or like here, you see egg mass of Tabanide flies, or very tiny eggs of Chrysopa on this stick, or open eggs, like here for saw flies, even small eggs of Psychoptera, they are attacked by parasitoids. Also the size less than 0.5 mm. Or the group of Cialidae near the water. So, and some eggs were hidden somewhere. It's very difficult to find. Because they are not visible, they are invisible. Only when you open the leaf, when you open a branch, you can find them inside. Like on the left side, this Leaf, roller, uh, leaf hoppers, they lay eggs inside the branch. They, when you open it, you can see just a bunch of different eggs. They're very small, not more than 0.5 or 1 millimeter. Or this egg of Atelabide, usually hidden inside leaf rolls. Also, you need to open leaf roll and egg will be inside. So they're hidden. And this is a subject which we study in laboratory and which is well known everywhere in the world. This is a genus Trichogramma and Trichogramma dendrolemi, parasitoid of eggs from different orders. And it's also reared in laboratory. Usually all Trichogramma used in this special way. Eggs of moth, they are just glued on its paper, they are parasitized by parasitoid and they, these small pieces of paper were distributed somewhere in a field for biological control of pests, for biological control of uh, caterpillars which are dangerous in agriculture or in forestry. And egg parasitoids they have a special uh, features of our biology because they have polyembryony, they have teletherapy, they have arenotoki, deuterotoki and even symbiosis. So, their biology is not very simple. There are a lot of points for special biological study of egg parasitoids. And if you, 
if I speak about uh, morphology, morphology, as I said, they're very small from 0.2 millimeter. Their wings very wide, uh, antennae very short, or the positor can be short or very long. We have a special genitalia, which is extremely important for identification. Only male genitalia used for identification of Trichobrama genus. For another genera, just the complex of all morphological uh, features. And, egg, and legs, all, all, all the family has a three segmented legs. And application of Trichobrama. This is uh, just a question which is the most important for agriculture and for biocontrol workers that Trichobrama egg parasitoids of caterpillars of egg parasitoids of different Lepidoptera used for their biological control. Worldwide used only six species, the most important here on this slide, but they are used on different agricultural and forestry crops. Uh, we studied, I studied uh, the Trichorama and the family Trichorama in Ukraine, in Turkey and in some other countries. And what is about my country, Ukraine? In Palearctic region, which is very wide, uh, third, um, 52 species of Trichobrama were recorded. For Ukraine, 15 species of Trichobrama were found. But only three species are used for biological control. Because uh, another species, this is a natural enemy, this is a natural resource of Trichobrama in the nature. What's about Turkey? In Turkey, I cited this information. Uh, because it is important. So, 10 species of Trichorama uh, were recorded in the literature and 25 species of 10 genera of family Trichorama TD were recorded in the literature. So, our task was to study the taxonomy of Trichorama and the family of Trichorama TD and to collect new material which will be new for science, new records for fauna and maybe new species for science. I was very pleased to be in collaboration with my colleagues in the Plant Protection Institute in Ankara, together with colleagues who are presented here and with Dr. Munivar Kadan, we visited some places, a little bit around the Turkey, not all places. We visited Aydin, so uh, south west part of Turkey. Uh, we visited Chubu, Beypazari, uh, Chankiri, Eldivan. So we already visited some agricultural places for collecting new material for the taxonomical and biological study in laboratories. So uh, we collected material in cabbage field, in tomato fields, in sweet cherry orchard, in pomegranate orchard. So these visits were very useful. And also together with Dr. Munavir Kadan, we studied material in laboratory because uh, in laboratory here presented a culture of Trichobrama egg parasitoid on eggs of Ephestia. And, it's, uh, and this culture is continually developing during the year. So in the beginning of spring uh, we need to refresh this material and also we need to control the species which are developing inside this culture. Because if we collect material in the nature and put it in the laboratory, sometimes it's easy to collect several species one species or two species all together and they will fight inside biology, inside laboratory. So that's why it is important to control is it one species or not. So we found that laboratory culture is clean, one, one culture belonging to dendrolemy, one belonging to evanescence and this third species, Pinte, uh, I collected in a field. And also I studied another genera and collected uh, for present day, six genera from in, uh, the family Trichogrammatide. And here I want to show a little bit how they look like. I hope. Oh, this I'm not sure. All right. No, video not coming. Video is not coming, unfortunately. So video is not working. So I will show you video later. So what's about laboratory? In laboratory we studied uh, about 
250 collected samples. We did uh, special microscopical slides with uh, more than 600 <coughs> specimens and uh, they will be deposited to the museum. So these two species, Evanescence and Dendronomy, they are originally originated from um, different hosts on corn and from another from um, on corn on Australian nubilalis and from on uh, sweet cherry from Archips rosana. And this is like with uh, some small uh, pictures uh, regarding morphological characters of Trichogrammatidae, which is important for identification. This is uh, uh, features and structure of wings, features of antennae and male genitalia. So all it needs to make a uh, special careful morphological study, measurements uh, to make uh, the size and to see uh, different uh, differences in shape in, and also in some small structures or in size of antenna set, for instance. And here the slide, instead of a video, I show some more slides. So here there are different Host of Trichogramma. Trichogramma, as I said, exclusively egg parasitoids. So, but Trichogramma can attack different families of moths. They attack uh, small eggs or big eggs, and from small eggs, uh, Trichogramma TD coming of small with small size and a little bit with bigger size, and in, in a, several individuals from big eggs, like here, Sphingida eggs. They, you can see here several individuals sitting on one egg, this green color, and laying eggs inside. Because more than 50 individuals will hatch from this big egg. But in laboratory, these eggs of a Cetotroga, they're small, and the same for Ephesta. From one egg, only one trichogramma hatching. And here eggs a little bit different. This is a Tortricide leaf rolling uh, moths. So they are usually flattened, they are not like balls, so they are flattened like a plate, but nevertheless they can be parasitized, and you can see here, this is my picture, here two uh, yellow color larvae inside, they are visible, a little bit visible, and eggs from white color, like on the left side, they are not parasitized, they are becoming black colored on the, in the center, and here I open, this is a pupa inside the egg. And also I want to show you some representatives of family Trichogrammatidae, which are extremely very different. Trichogramma you saw very small and with no part ovipositor extended. Ovipositor is hidden. But this representative genus uh, Poropea with a long like a sword, this ovipositor on the top of abdomen, very long, because this parasite needs to penetrate this uh, special leaf box leaf rolling beetles by making these leaf rolls so parasitoid need to penetrate with ovipositor this leaf roll to find the egg inside because <laughs> eggs of course hidden inside leaf bag or for example sometimes some hosts they cut the eggs with a different secret secret and this secret usually hardening so for example trichorama pinte attack eggs of uh, Chrysomelidae eggs, which are usually covered with a secret. Uh, these leaf beetles were very, uh, very funny. You know them. Sometimes they eat uh, different weeds. Oh, this is another uh, representative which attack leaf rollers, but with very short, with very short ovipositor. But also they attack small, and this parasitoid is much smaller. The first one black color about one millimeter, and this is only 0.5 millimeter. And but this species coming to also to the leaf roller, uh, leaf rolls of Deparaus on, and this beetle is small about five millimeter. Host of this parasitoid, and parasitoid attacking eggs inside under cuticula of leaf. So leaf. Um, Beetle lay eggs inside the leaf under the cuticula and parasitoid need to penetrate cuticula or just attack this egg in cuticula of under the epidermis of leaves. This parasitoid also very interesting and surprising. I hope we will collect it in here. It's 
I have only one individual in collection, parasitoid of P. weevil, Bruchus pezorum and other Bruchidid beetles. A very small parasitoid, 0.5 mm, and one parasitoid developing only in one egg of Bruchidid beetle. But mm, I did these experiments and some uh, and other scientists in other countries they did experiments, they reread this parasitoid on eggs of laboratory culture of this bean beetle alive uh, uh, Cantacelides or Bruchus uh, or Calas of Bruchus chinensis for instance so if we receive eggs of uh, bean beetles in laboratory and give them as a fresh eggs for this parasitoid we can receive laboratory culture of this parasitoid for morphological study, for biological study here, this is a very special parasitoid, a unique one, uh, which was shown in the, in the movie of uh, David Attenborough, Prestwitia Aquatica, and actually I sent him for his, for his movie. And this is a picture I did, uh, this parasitoid underwater, because this is aquatic parasitoid. This parasitoid living exclusively in the water, like Cyclops or Daphnia. This parasitoid, if you take the parasitoid in a petri dish out of water, they will die after in only 5-10 minutes because they need to breathe only under water. So on the top you can see these eggs of aquatic beetles. Actually these eggs were collected from plants. Beetles were lay, uh, diving beetles were lay eggs inside plants. So I collected plants, I opened them, put them in a petri dish and these eggs were also inside water, underwater, but they are transparent. So you can see development of parasitoid from white to with red eyes and then black pupa and adults. Or for instance here, attacking egg, egg and laying egg, or repositing. And this is very funny, very surprising sausage. This is not a sausage, this is egg of diving beetle Dytiscus. And size is very surprising, about 11 millimeters, so very big. And usually people cannot see it because these eggs were hidden inside plants and plants living inside water. So it needs to collect plants from the water, open plants, and inside you can find these interesting eggs. <coughs> Another uh, example of eggs, these eggs of uh, different flies. Flies sometimes lay eggs one by one or sometimes in a group, like this Tabanide. Tabanide lay many eggs, they are dangerous for different animals and for humans, but this Stratumide and Tabanide, they lay many eggs together, so possible to collect them, they are visible. Sometimes it's possible to find them in a, near the lake, pond, river, near the water edge, and sometimes possible to collect parasitoids, you see here. On fresh eggs, some parasitoids coming and attacking. And black eggs on the top, not so good visible, but they already parasitized. And this is a special host. I wanted to concentrate attention because tree trees were very important agricultural pests. But we have larval parasitoids and we have egg parasitoids. Trips is very small, as I told, only one millimeter. But this egg parasitoid is also smaller, 0.2 millimeter. Uh, this is larval parasitoid attacking very, very small larval of trips. Trips is growing, parasitoid is growing. And the smallest attack only the egg of trips. And the size is 0.2 millimeters. Uh, now, this is a very special subject of research of different scientists because. This uh, parasitoid has a special brain. Some researchers studied the brain of this parasitoid and cells of brain of this parasitoid has no nucleus. Usually in other um, tissues and especially in brain cells, there are cells with nucleus. But in this parasitoid, this uh, brain cells has no nucleus. And finally, uh, this is some results of our study. Uh, briefly saying, we studied morphological characters, characters of venation, wings, abdomen, male genitalia, 
we made field collecting of trichoramatidae. We were lucky to identify just precisely two species of trichorama, clean culture in laboratory of Plant Protection Research Institute here in Ankara. We already collected 15 species and six genera of family trichoramatidae indicated here. And some future results for our uh, collaboration with uh, Dr. Muniver Kadan, because my research here is supported by Tubitak. So this is uh, our collaborative research. We will continue our study and collecting of Trichogramma and other uh, general family Trichogrammatidae in Turkey. We will search for new hosts to study biology of Trichogramma and other genera. We hope to rear some material in the laboratory because this is the most important part to study biology and to receive culture because if you collect some eggs you can receive living material and you can multiplicate these insects inside laboratory. Uh, we are planning to publish some papers on methods of collecting of parasitic hymenoptera about uh, planning uh, the paper on morphological variation of trichogramma in laboratory culture and of course uh, we are planning some reviews, or taxonomical reviews, of several genera of Trichogrammatidae, including genera uh, Trichogramma, Parasyntrobia, Aphelinoidae, and others. Mm, and of course, I'm very pleased to say my great acknowledgements, my great thanks to uh, all colleagues who helped me for this study, of course, to Tubitak uh, organization, to my Institute of Zoology, to all administrative staff in, in, in Plant Protection Research Institute and all the colleagues who are presented here in this uh, hall, of course, and who I indicated here, thank you very much for your kind help during our travels, during collecting, during researching in the laboratory with equipment, and this is an uh, invaluable collaboration for all of us. Thank you for your great attention. This small boy represents uh, our collecting of material with uh, Dr. Muniver Kadana. We collected eggs of uh, this tortured city, Archips Rosana, in El Divan during the spring. So these eggs are already empty, because here parasitoids were imaged, and these are not empty. So they are covered. So inside, inside they are on the bark of a cherry, so inside some caterpillars developing and our egg parasitoids, trichogramma, developing inside these eggs. And they are coming! So they are coming from these eggs, then they are already now in laboratory culture. But each individual needs to make a hole before appearance to the life. So the female making the hole, so cutting the, all this edge of and coming imaging. And you can see red eyes, so, because uh, this is very important to see on the road, and it's difficult to come. So, insect coming, and something happening after that, because this is female, but male nearby, waiting for female. So, the male is coming! <laughs> the male is coming, he is very happy, so there's a process of biological mating, you, you know, and they not, have no wings, but they are already mating. And they are very bright, maybe they are a little bit wet. I think so. So this. And after that, they need to clean. They clean their body. So very careful. Very careful insects. And also, you know, we put them already in the laboratory and they now developing on a festia. And this is a big portrait of a wingless male. You can see here the antennae, hairy antennae. And this individual has no wings. He's sitting, just already just drying because it needs some time. Sometimes some males they have wings, but some but part of in our culture they have no wings. This is also morphological differences, and they have differences even in the structure of antennae. With uh, with wings, antennae longer, with big hair, hairs, but if no wings, antennae shorter and small head small setter here and insect usually after imaging need to clean very carefully this is grooming this is a process of grooming cleaning the body because of some moisture on the body so insects need to clean it very very carefully and size of insects as I said 0.5 millimeter so very small so 
simply in nature very difficult to collect. But if we collect eggs, we collect host, it's possible to collect many individuals. It's much easier to rear it in laboratory if you collected, of course, eggs. So the cleaning is a very, very important part of life. And after this video, I also very pleased to show another video because another video also very surprising. Yeah, you need, needed just to close it. As I said about these aquatic parasitoids, aquatic parasitoids are difficult to find, difficult to see. And this parasitoid is sitting in a petri dish, but not only simply in a petri dish, sitting underwater in petri dish. So this is like a cyclop in the water. So this is a, on the bottom. This is a yellow egg, and female depositing egg inside the egg of a, in a water beetle. And now just taking off ovipositor from the egg. This is a needle. Needle. This is ovipositor, and this is egg one millimeter, one millimeter size egg of aquatic beetle. Four individuals of parasitoids inside. And we're just image, but before. Hatching, we are just moving inside and trying to find how to make a hole, how to come out. And also this is underwater. So we will emerge and go inside water, because this parasito is aquatic. But this is a very big sausage I showed you. This is a sausage egg of a Dytiscus beetle, Predaceous <coughs> aquatic beetle. Very long. On the screen is a 10 millimeters. 10 millimeters. So, and inside more than 100 parasitoids developing inside this egg. Now we image, and this is small pieces of uh, food inside egg. And this, they are flying. We are not flying in air, we are flying inside water. They are swimming in water with their legs like dogs. So we use the, all their six legs for swimming. So we are swimming here also under water in a petri dish. So one individual died here, but all others were not crawling, they are swimming with legs. So this, there are many, many of these individuals were so quickly moving inside water. That's why we call them aquatic parasitoids. So they are very funny and very interesting for biological study. Thank you for your attention. So far, sir, uh, also, uh, from your speech, I understand that you are interested in uh, insect behavior. At this point, at this point, I want to ask a question. Have you uh, any ex? Have you, sorry, my wife. <laughs> uh, have you any experience in insect behavior? Did you use insect behavior in taxonomy? How can we use insect behavior in egg parasite taxonomy? Have you any experience using with insects uh, behavior and uh, defining taxonomic criteria? Uh, first of all, I would say that I used the um, biology of parasitoid to find them. Yeah. To find them because if I know from literature, for instance, that parasitoids living on some beetles, so these beetles they must eat some plants. So that's why I need to go to the nature and collect especially this plant and observe how this plant is growing, when this beetle lay eggs, and then I can collect this parasitoid. Because actually if uh, some parasitoids will develop on uh, different hosts with a different biology, maybe uh, they will have a, a different taxonomical position. For instance, one host can develop in May, another host will develop in June or July. So biology will be different okay, and there will be okay. different species. Biology is okay, but uh, by using foraging behavior, uh, it is possible to identify uh, some parasitoids. For example, uh, Trivogramma, in literature, many people use uh, behavioral criteria why identifying uh, insects? That's why I am asking, have you any experience like that? Mm -hmm. Just you use biological criteria and morphological criteria? Mm, for okay. myself, for myself, okay. I use mostly 
morphological criteria. Okay, I see. So I studied morphology, but of course uh, some biology is very important for studying yeah. for because some tree are developing on some horse like in a cherry orchard, another developing on uh, moss in a mice, another on tomatoes. So we some uh, scientists say there are different races, mm -hmm. races of uh, strains of trichogramma on different hosts. So we can we can suggest that they can be different species. But for that uh, most important biological uh, character, we need to make crossing of them. Yeah. If we make a successful crossing, it's okay. Sometimes it needs time because it's a long process. And sometimes people say that after crossing we can receive new species. And also it's uh, this opinion described in literature because maybe first generation will be just cross with unusual morphological um, features. It can be described like a new species, but later this cross will not develop because they, because uh, this is a real two species. Yeah, I see. Another question is, uh, have you any experience uh, on mass culture of uh, egg parasites, for example, trichogramma, or what's going on in uh, your country uh, about mass culture of trichogramma or other uh, egg parasites? It's common application in your country? Mm -hmm. Now, actually, uh, this is not so common uh, because um, now uh, big farmers, they don't use it. Now it's used only in some uh, small agricultural areas for like a private private farmers. Okay. Thanks. Before the, it was used in, in very large areas when all these laboratories were governmental, the mass pro production, and it was cheaper. Now everything became more expensive. So only small fa private farmers were interested in such biological control. Sometimes in yeah, big agricultural areas they use chemical control. So that's uh, unfortunate. Can I ask? Uh, you talk about uh, your future plans, especially morphological variations of males. Uh, is it possible to see these morphological variations in the same spaces? Uh, if it, it is possible, uh, is it uh, enough uh, uh, to make the identifications uh, according to uh, morphological characters? Right. Uh, this was a point to describe this morphological variation because uh, there are some morphological variations which were described for some species, but not for all species, and it is possible to identify you. Use, using these uh, different changes, so it is important to show it because even now in some publications we have only uh, white and black pictures. Uh, so this is pictures like in uh, you say like in a Linnaeus time, but now we have a mm, microscope, so all these pictures can be quite uh, good quality. We can be measured, so we can s not only to observe but we can make suggestion that this is morphological ch changes, which especially for these species, because we want to use one culture of one species and to observe and to describe these changes for one species and for another species. So, In the same spaces, uh, is it possible to see these uh, variations? Yes, yes, yes, it is uh, possible to observe it. Uh, just in some species it's easier to identify it. But for another species, from the literature for instance, uh, we use a um, variation of genitalia. But so small changes, so this is very difficult to identify. Sometimes people say, small changes, new species. A little bit smaller than new species. But if we can have a laboratory culture, we can see this is just laboratory. This is not just only one dry individual. Living material is the most important and most valuable for this study. When you have a living material and growing, mm, developing culture, so this is one species. But it needs uh, study and identification. Well, I think it is necessary uh, to uh, make uh, molecular uh, identifications. Uh, 
maybe uh, classic, classical taxonomy uh, cannot be enough uh, to make the identifications in this situation. Yes, especially uh, this is point regarding some species which are described only with few males. And because some species of trichoroma, they have no males. So for them it is very difficult to make a uh, study. Uh, but for this species, we have, um, have symbiosis with a Volbache, Volbache, and for that, for this species, it is possible to make a molecular DNA study, because we can use only female, and still we can identify uh, this female with Volbache, one species, with no Volbache, another species. So that's a miracle. One species with Volbache, only female and another female, no Valbache, and morphologically indistinguishable, this is absolutely impossible. But with DNA, possible to make this identification, especially for females. Çok teşekkür ediyoruz. Ee, katıldığınız, bizim, bizi dinlediğiniz için teşekkür ediyoruz hepinize. Ee, çay e, ikramımız olacak. Sizi alalım, ayakta yine sohbet edelim.